Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about dependency injection service lifetimes. The reason I decided to talk about this topic is because I have received comment from few of you regarding the understanding of what are the different service lifetimes in the out-of-box dependency injection container in .NET Core or .NET 5 and how it behaves on different scenario. So I thought it would be a good idea to talk about it and walk through an example with different scenarios how the lifetime actually impacts a life cycle of an object. So in .NET Core or .NET 5, in the out-of-box dependency injection container, an object can be registered either of three different ways. The first way is transient. Now transient basically means an object is created every time they are requested from the container. It does not matter how many times the object has been called. Every time it is called, a new instance will be created and it will be returned from the dependency injection container. And the transient object are disposed at the end of each request. The next is scoped. Now for scoped application, if we consider let's say for example a web-based application a web api a scope lifetime basically indicates that the instance of the object that you are requesting from the dependency injection container will be created once per the request life cycle meaning once for an http request even if you call five times the same object created will be returned across the lifetime of the request. And once I walk through the example, it will be much more clearer how it behaves. And the object will be disposed at the end of the request. And the third way of creating object is singleton. The singleton object will be created only once for the entire life cycle of the application. Every subsequent request for the object from the dependency injection container will give the same instance. Doesn't matter how many time in the entire life cycle of the application it is called, it will return the same object again and again. And I'm going to show a demo to show how it works. Now, one thing to remember, which is very critical in terms of how these different objects should be created or the order of operation. In terms of the order of operation, a singleton service can be resolved from a singleton or a scoped or a transient service. Similarly, a scope service can be or should be resolved from a scoped or transient service. The one thing we should be careful about is not to resolve a scope service from a singleton service because it might have unwanted consequences on how we use the scope service. So this is something we have to keep in mind. Now the next question comes is in which scenario we use what kind of services. Now let's get into the application so that we can dig into that particular detail. Now for the example, I'm going to create a new ASP.NET Core web application, lifetime.demo, just to demonstrate the lifetime and I'm going to create once it is created, I'm going to create a new controller. I'm going to create a API controller, create a read write, and I'm going to name it as count controller. It's just going to provide count. Now let's create a class and we call it as counter. And the counter class is going to have A private integer count and then it will have a public void increment and here we're going to do count plus plus and then we are going to return this count through a get method. That's all, it's a very simple class. It increments a count on increment call and returns when a get is called. I'm going to create an interface as I always do for best practice 
I have got this question like do we need to create interfaces well interface is a good practice because it helps to mock the class so in future if you have to do unit testing and I encourage everyone to do unit testing for every business logic classes we create uh, in which case an interface helps so we have a counter which does increment and we are going to create two different classes and I'm going to explain why too because it is going to help us test all the scenarios so first class will be fast counter it's a very odd name but a name which is clear enough for this example and here we're going to take I counter as a parameter and then here it's an increment and get method as the name suggests it's first going to do a increment and then it is going to return get that's about it again it's not a very fancy class it's a very simple class and it only for the purpose of demo in real life yes you can relate now if you ask me well this is not a real life example but you can relate how it might work right like as you can see we have a state we are changing the state through increment and getting the state that's all this class is representing it has a state we're changing the state it doesn't matter what the change and how it is changed but essentially we are changing the state and we are always returning the current state of this particular object that's what it is it's a simple state object or a state class and here the counter what I created it's just encapsulating how the state is being changed that's about it now you can relate it to most of the real life example scenarios you can have a in memory state which can be manipulated by multiple classes right so this is one of the class and then I'm going to create a second class and not so intelligent name but I'm going to give second counter and it's going to have similar implementation take counter in the constructor and I'm just going to copy paste this method because it is going to be same and we're going to create an interface I second counter now that we are ready what we are going to do is from here it's going to get rid of all this method because we don't need them I'm going to change this to int and here I'm going to create a constructor I'm going to get fast counter and I'm going to get second counter and I'm going to initialize both these objects and then here I'm going to first do fast counter dot increment and get and then second counter dot increment and get I'm just returning the increment from the second counter and once I go to run this application it will be clear why this is useful for this example now let's go and add these classes to dependency injection container and first we are going to start with transient then we'll go to scoped and finally we'll show the singleton so let's start with this let's create services dot add transient and we have I counter which is of type counter then we have again services dot air transient we have I first counter fast counter and then third one is air transient I second counter second counter so all the three classes are declared now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this application and we're going to see that every time we run it is going to create a new instance of counter inside of first counter and second counter so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint here and a breakpoint 
here so that we can see it how it works I'm going to run this application and once the application is started what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the swagger and use this try let's execute so when we come here if we get into the counter we'll see that count is zero so now we incremented of course count will increment to one and we got it then we come to the next class which is second counter and this time we'll see that counter count is again zero because it's a complete different instance than the previous one and here it goes so once we run this we see count is one because though the counter is used by both of these classes but given that it is transient every time you request a new instance will be given to you irrespective of how you call it now if we run this again we should see the exact same result which is one now change the implementation and let's see how it behaves with scoped so let's just change this as I said the higher level classes can still remain transient and call a scoped and that's what we are going to keep so this is now scoped this too remains transient as you can understand it's a hierarchy it's kind of a hierarchy so it makes sense calling a higher lifetime object from a lesser lifetime object now I'm going to do a try execute this time things are going to change a little bit so we have counter initially it's zero we increment it's going to become one now we go to the next one see here the counter count is already one and when we increment it's going to become two it is because since we are using the second counter and the first counter part of the same HTTP request inside of get and we have said that the counter is scoped which means inside of the scope of this particular get method whichever classes you call if they use the counter the same instance of the counter will be returned by the dependency injection container hence we are seeing the same counter return and the count is persisted hence we are getting two as the answer but if we execute again it is still going to be two because it's a new request hence a new object will be given and the old object would have been destroyed so the state is maintained only during the lifetime of a particular request so now as you understand when to use transient versus when to use scoped you use transient when you don't want to maintain any state inside of a class that class belongs to transient but if you want to maintain state across different calls inside the lifetime of a particular HTTP request then you used scoped lifetime in dependency injection and finally if you want to keep the state of the object across request for the lifetime of an application you use singleton and finally if you want to keep the state across the lifetime of an application doesn't matter how many time it restarts as well as across different version of the same application running well you know the answer then you go into a persisted state which is database or out of process cache that's something is very normal and we do all the time which is saving data in database now let's move this from scoped to singleton and see how it behaves and as expected what is going to happen is irrespective of how many time we execute the request from the browser the same object will be returned again and again and again and it is going to maintain the state so the number increment number is going to go higher and higher so this time it is two two we execute again now this is going to go and this is going to become three and then finally four and let me just disable all the breakpoint and run it and show it in the UI six eight 10 and it will continue going until unless we stop the process and start it again and when we start it again of course it's going to start from zero but after that it will continue to keep the state say it starts with two four six eight 
So now as you can understand based on how you want to maintain the state of an object you will define the lifetime of that particular object. So if you don't have any state to deal with go with transient. If you want to maintain the state across multiple call inside of a same HTTP request then go with scoped and if you want to maintain the state as long as the application is up go with singleton. These are the three options. Now one of the questions that was posed in terms of you know the overhead of garbage collection with transient. Well the whole idea of transient objects are they doesn't maintain any state. Hence there should be very less chances of actual object being heavy and creating pressure on the memory to cause a garbage collection. So in a real life scenario if you create multiple transient object usually it is not going to be an overhead on the heap because most of the time if it doesn't have any state there is nothing essentially which will be created in the heap apart from if it is accessing multiple other classes only the references to this classes which are saved. I don't think it's a big deal creating transient for the classes which are stateless. But again if you are maintaining state then based on what is the lifetime of the object you want to achieve you are going to use that particular method of registration in the dependency injection container. So that's all I wanted to cover today. If you have any question regarding this object lifecycle please leave me a comment and I'll try to answer to best of my knowledge. If you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you are watching this channel for the first time and if you think you are getting value out of this channel please subscribe to my channel and thanks so much for watching this video.